popular guest. We appreciate him coming back on. His new book's out. He's offering our listeners. It's a nice thing he sent along at, uh, at uh, harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones. A free chapter from his book and more with some of the key charts and things we're going to be showing here today. And I want to get into that with him. I want to debate uh, inflation, deflation with him. Not that I even disagree with him, but I want to go through these nuances with a technical guy, just with my layman view. Maybe he can explain some of these paradoxes to me. But first, the last five minutes, you heard me break down just some of my experiences uh, being out of the country, coming back to the country. The border's wide open. The government pays to ship the illegals in. On the buses, we have video of it and them admitting it. Obama won't admit it and says it's ridiculous we should have amnesty to fix this when they already are causing it by giving them fiat amnesty. People are waking up, but still things are getting worse. The elite are acting like they don't care. In five minutes before we go to break, or I'll skip the break, uh, explain to me your perspective on what's happening. I mean, is this like Caligula marrying his horse or Nero committing suicide? I mean, is the elite going insane like Hitler attacking Russia? Or or is there some method to this, uh, Mr. Dent? Well, you know, there's not to me. Like, like you said before, people are destroying natural systems. The free market capitalism is a natural, organic, biological system that needs the dynamics of opposites. It is being overmanaged. They're, they're trying to run the economy like it's a machine. You know, they're not, they don't, we have the worst immigration policies in the world. I'm just back from Australia in February, about to go back in July again. They have the best immigration policies in the world. You know, you have to be qualified to get in. Uh, they attract the people they want. You don't, you can't just run across the borders. So they're surrounded by an ocean, so that makes it a little easier for them. We, we've got horrible immigration policies, but we have even worse financial policies. The government is basically running our economy now on like artificial drugs, and that never works out well. They're not allowing debts to rebalance. They're not allowing bubbles to rebalance and the economy to rebalance. They're just saying the economy can't slow down. They've taken over the economy. And again, trying to run it like it's an inorganic machine, which it's not. So, you know, <clears throat> I hear all the stuff you say about, you know, uh, pollution in the environment, uh, you know, modified foods. Well, I mean, I was just uh, listening to a guy saying, you know, our, our intestines are all screwed up because we've overused drugs and antibiotics so much that we've killed all the good bacteria uh, while fighting the bad. I mean, we're, we don't have enough respect for the wisdom of natural systems. Adam Smith said it, you know, the invisible hand, how our economy runs from the bottoms up. If you just set some good rules and let it let innovation happen and let booms and busts happen and let inflation and deflation happen. And in my work, inflation and deflation are the critical um, incentives for innovation. And if you, if you don't allow this to happen, and, and most of the innovations happen in bust, not in boom, and then they, they come into our economy in the boom. So I, economists to me, politicians, do not understand our economy. They have kind of hijacked it. They are running it for elite interest. The top 1% has run away with almost all the gains now for decades. And by keeping this bubble going, after creating the greatest bubble in history, um, debt and, and financial assets, the government's only policy is to keep the bubble going forever. It keeps the top 1%. Uh, making uh, outsized gains. It, it, it fosters all this inequality and polarization in society. It's the worst economic policies I've ever seen in history. And that tells me that it's going to end badly. And of course, I've been warning the last few times on your show as well that the Dow is going to get to somewhere like 17,000 where it is recently. And, 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 and by the way, you said that just about a month and a half ago on the show. People can go back to it. That did come true. And, and in fact, you don't like to brag. Uh, folks can go to your website and see some of the past reports, uh, harrydent.com. But but tell some of the people out there some of the predictions you've made that have been spot on. I mean, you do have a very accurate prediction uh, background here. That's who we have on the show, people that are accurate. I mean, you can tune into CNBC most days and just get a bunch of bull because yeah. because they're being literally told to put that out. I've talked to some behind the scenes. They would lose their jobs like, you know, Dylan Radigan or whatever uh, if they don't play ball. Uh, so, so, so recap for folks some of the big predictions you've made that came true. Well, first of all, you know, the biggest tool we use of many is demographics. We know exactly when people buy the most cars, houses, when they spend the most money, borrow the most, uh, pay for babysitting, you name it. There's, there's almost nothing I don't know about the life cycle of consumers. And consumers are 70% of our GDP and businesses who invest when consumers are growing are another 10. Government's only 20, thank God. 
Uh, so we use demographics to predict trends. And in, in, when I first got these tools in late 89, I came out with my first book and we predicted simultaneously that Japan would see a giant crash in the 1990s while the US and Europe would see the greatest boom in history. People thought we were absolutely nuts. Then in the early 90s, when we had the recession that we predicted, we said, no, we're going to come out of this. And the Dow is going to hit 10,000 or higher by the early 2000s. And that happened. We called the tech peak in, in, in uh, February and April. We called the Internet peak in February and the uh, NASDAQ peak in April just within one month of the peak and said, look, this bubble, this is, go this is a peak. It's going to start to burst. Then we called the housing peak in late 2005. I literally moved from uh, Miami to Tampa in that time period, sold my house in Miami, rented in Tampa, saved a fortune, so I practice what I preach. And we've been saying now for 20 years that in, in late 2007, the baby boomers would peak in spending and we would start to move into a downward economy. Well, what, we did get our big crash in 2008, right on cue, but governments have just said, well, we won't let that happen anymore. We won't let the economy go down. We won't let banks fail. We won't let companies fail. We won't let debts be restructured uh, or entitlements, which are just off, off, off the charts unaffordable. So they're preventing the very crisis that could rebalance our economy, get rid of this top 1% running away with all the games and everything, uh, but they won't do it. And, and so what's going to happen instead, they just created a bubble. They created a bigger bubble again. And we've been telling people in, in, the, in the, over the last several months, Somewhere around Dow 17,000, a little higher. This bubble is going to peak. It's going to peak soon. And the next crash is going to take us to lower lows than we saw in 2009, about five to 6,000 on the Dow. That, that's a very clear pattern, higher highs in each bubble peak, lower lows in each crash. The government keeps stimulating to try to avoid the crisis, but only creates a bigger crisis down the road, just like taking more drugs to keep from coming down. That's exactly what they're doing financial sure. drugs. Quantitative but, easing is basically like crack for the economy. Again, if you just joined us, you can visit the website harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones and you can get unpublished chapter. So it's an unpublished chapter. That's even better. Uh, the demographic uh, cliff book that's already a bestseller. We're going to go through some of those graphs today uh, as well. If you're a TV viewer watching at prisonplanet.tv or infowars.com forward slash show to find the free feed of the daytime um, broadcast and transmission. Now, continuing with Harry Dent, if you just tuned in, I'm Alex Jones. We're talking about where the world is in, uh, today, and so many people send me emails. It is a minority, but I, I do get a lot of them, and I, I get it on the street or when I do radio interviews or TV interviews. Alex, why are you such a pessimist? Why are you complaining? Why are you saying this is bad or, or you know, this is terrible? Well, it's because I want to differentiate what's good from bad. I socially want to wake people up to try to make the world a freer, more open place. Now, if someone disagrees with me about what my views are, that's fine, but it's my free speech. But denying all these trends that are as clear as the nose on my face or your face is the stuff of societal collapse. And, and if we don't reverse this, we have a managed economy like Japan or Venezuela, two different managed systems. One of them managed much better, but still in a 20 year recession slash depression with signs of total societal collapse. Nobody's having kids. Uh, you look at Venezuela, they can't keep the lights on. I mean, we know that managed systems don't work. And, and, and we know that there's this tiny elite that are scapegoating the free market while they run away with all the gains, creating a giant piranha-like underclass that they are using politically to fully socialize the once great Western nations because the globalists are exempt in most cases from what they've done to us. So, so what I'm asking you is, how do we politically, I understand it's important to know these trends and understand them so we can individually take care of ourselves and be in a better position, maybe even you know, thrive from it. That's a very moral and, and smart thing to do. But at the same time, what do you say about political hope? I mean, I, uh, there's some huge awakening happening on one side, but also <laughs> incredible arrogance by the ruling class on the other. So where does all this go? Well, you know, Ali, the only hope I have, and this is exactly what I see happen, a crisis is what gets people clear. I am just like you. I am crystal clear on debt trends. They're off the charts. The greatest debt bubble in history, and that never ends well. Entitlements are even worse than that. We never even had entitlements in the Great Depression when that debt bubble and financial bubble burst. We got financial assets 
overvalued again, more than ever, about to burst. And we're going to see a crisis because a lot of wealth is going to disappear when these bubble bursts. And a lot of banks are going to have to fail when people realize the government can't just artificially create growth forever when the demographic trends and the debt trends are down. So I'm clear on this, but I'm also clear, unlike economists, they're saying that China is the new model, state-driven capitalism. And I'm like, you have to be kidding me. China makes Japan or any other managed system look like nothing. China has over expanded, over managed their economy from top to bottom and talk about crony capitalism. The way you get rich in China is you're the friend with the local Communist Party mafia leader. And that's what it is. It's a big mafia. China has 27 percent of their condos and homes vacant, overbuilt, giant malls vacant, overbuilt, roads to nowhere, bridges to nowhere, railway stations that nobody's using. They have overmanaged, overbuilt. Well, let me just stop you for a minute. Country in history. That's what this unpublished chapter I'm giving away for free about. It didn't make it in time because I was rushing to get the book out. I got it into the uh, Korean and Chinese and, and Asian books, but I didn't get it in the U.S. book. So this is the most important chapter. It looks at China thoroughly and shows what's exactly what's going on, why state managed capitalism is gonna create the biggest disaster in the world. It's gonna be the failure of China's managed system that I think is gonna most wake up politicians and economists and teach them that the free market system works better as long as you just have some simple rules. And then that's what they've abandoned because they want more. They want to manage the Sure, economy. sure, well, they're gonna they use- have a recession. Well, I mean, in the brains of the socialist bean counters, the collapsing things gives them more power so that they think they're going to survive it. But if we politically expose them, this could really be the end of them. I agree with you. The crisis yeah. they've been helping create and exacerbate is, is their downfall if we simply tell the truth with the narrative against their narrative. Our narrative, the truth, will defeat their narrative, the lie. But looking at China, you, you hit the nail on the head right there. Nobody brings this up. When I look at Europe and the U.S.'s elites, what upsets me about the real controlling socialist elite is that A, they're exempt from what they're doing to the rest of us, but B, they're so anti-freedom, anti-market, anti-male, anti-independence that they don't even want a lifeblood in their own system that they've got control of. But then they embrace, in the Economist magazine every month, as I'm, I guess you're talking about that, I see it everywhere, China that has suicide nets, mobile execution vans, forced abortions in their factories, just stuff off the chart evil, rivers getting set on fire, they're so toxic, and then this is the model a bunch of Chinese generals that are tax exempt making millions of dollars with their corrupt little royalty mafia families. I know I'm ranting here, Harry, but but I mean, the fact that our elite loves the Chinese model, the Chinese communist state run model shows you how much trouble we're in. Yeah, you know, these people who love this model ought to go over there and choke on the smog. And like you say, they're, they're the most polluted environment. They're creating the most pollution in the world. They're creating the most, they're adding the most to this global bubble that is just going to burst. And again, that's what we'll talk later about deflation. When you get bubbles burst, when wealth disappears, when debts fail and get restructured, money disappears. Money just disappears and you get look. Fewer dollars chasing the same goods. You get deflation, not inflation. And all this overcapacity and overbuilding. I mean, China's pretty much overbuilt their economy for the next 12 years in advance of urbanization. And they've urbanized twice as fast as any country in history, which is dangerous. I mean, they're, they're uprooting all their traditions. They're basically destroying their economy. And then, like you say, our economists say, oh, wow, this is such a great model because they grow 8% a year and rarely have recessions. And that's an economist's dream. But if you look at it and you, you get this chapter, believe me, um, the reason I'm putting all this stuff out like you is I'm going to be there to say I told you so because people do need to learn. We are going to get this crisis. You cannot keep a bubble going forever. You cannot manipulate an economy forever. You can't take more and more financial drugs and not have consequences. So this crisis is going to hit, but people need to understand why it happened and, and, and what the cause of it was so we don't repeat this mistakes. And so these people do lose credibility. That's right. Harry, we got to go to break. is screwing our economy. Harry Dent's our uh, guest. I'm Alex Jones. Dave Bratton, Virginia, just won the primary, as folks know. He's an economist. Sounds just like Mr. Dent. This is a popular idea, folks. 
We're going to break it all down on the other side and, and, and look at where the economy is going. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire.